morning, everyone. Good morning. Ready to worship? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for another day. You've given us breath, God. That we can lift up with thanksgiving, God, and to praise your name. And to thank you for the life we have. Lord, thank you for the opportunities we have to know you, God, to serve you. Lord, and to make you known in this world, God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to have your way in us this morning, God. Lord, that you would just push away distractions, God. And Lord, we just pray, God, that you would just renew our hearts, renew our minds, renew our thoughts this morning as we look to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let everything the
what's due to me. And it goes right along with that song we just sang. And it says, on my best day, I'm a child of God. On my worst day, I'm a child of God. Every day is a good day. And you're the reason why. How many of you believe that this morning? On my best day, I'm a child of God. On my worst day, I'm a child. Did we catch everybody? We got everybody? On your best day, worst day, no matter, you're a child of God. Amen? I'd like us to sing that song again. But before we do, I want you to go to two or three people. Introduce yourself or just let them, or just give them a quick little eye glance and look at their name tag. Come on, take a moment right now to just welcome somebody, visit with somebody. Let them know that you're glad that they're here this morning in the house of God. Amen. sleep this morning and you're already sitting down. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I told the staff, I think next year when we uh, turn the clock back, we won't advertise it. We won't put it on Facebook. We won't send emails. Trying to get everybody here early and on time. I don't know how it works, but amen. Let's all stand together. I want to go to the Lord in prayer. Ask God for, God for his blessing on this morning upon our lives, upon all that concerns us. Amen. We are children of God. Amen. Something to rejoice in, to be grateful for this morning. So, Father God, we thank you today, God. Yes, we thank you, Lord, that we are your children, God. Yes. We thank you, God, that you are our loving, heavenly Father. Yes. God, you have a plan for our lives. And God, you have a plan for today, God. Yes. God, help us to see it. Help us to perceive it. Help us to know you today, God, in a better way. Lord, I pray through every aspect, every part of the service this morning, God, that we would come to know you in a better way, in a deeper way. Lord, speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds, Lord. Give us ears to hear. Give us a heart to perceive you this morning in this place. God, we give you thanks. We give you praise and honor and glory, God. Today, we ask your blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Come on, sing unto the Lord with all of your heart. In Jesus' name.
that are represented here this morning in the gospel of Luke says he came to Nazareth where he'd been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath and he stood to read and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and he gave it back to the attendant and sat down and all the eyes were fixed on him in the synagogue. And he began to say to, to them, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And this morning I wanna pray according to the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Spirit of the Lord is upon him, and he has been anointed. Another way is to say he has been enabled. He has been strengthened and graced to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, brokenhearted people. See, culture has changed, uh, society has changed in a lot of ways, but the ministry of Jesus hasn't, and the needs of people haven't changed. There are still brokenhearted people. There are still people who need deliverance. Yes. People that have captive by their past, captive by their sin, captive by their emotions. The recovery of sight to the blind. There are a lot of people who see in the natural but can't see spiritually. To set at liberty those who are oppressed, bruised, downtrodden. We want to do that this morning. I'm going to ask Pastor Maureen to come. But if you have a need, let's go to God in prayer and faith. Would you move out of your seat? If you have a need, would you come around? The front is signifying that you have a need and that we are putting our trust in the Lord this morning. Come on, every need God has made provision for. Every need God cares for this morning. The Bible says casting all our care on Him because God cares for us. And we want to lift up our voice all around this place and pray in the powerful name and the mighty name of Jesus. And believe that that healing will flow, that deliverance will flow, that breakthrough will come, that bondage will be broken off, that oppression will go. Hallelujah. Come on all over this place. You know, even if you're not in the front, just begin to lift up your voice. Let's begin to call upon God this morning all over this place. Jesus said, my father's house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Come on, let's be the people of God. Let's be the church of God, praying, crying out to God this morning. Cry out to God for your miracle this morning. How many in here need a miracle? It's not for God. In the name of Jesus. You don't know how you're going to make it. You need a miraculous intervention. Well, God is God of miracles, as Pastor just read. And we're believing today that he's able to do the impossible. Father, we know many situations here, and many we don't know. But God, there are dire needs that are represented right here before us right now. God, and you see the cries of the hearts of your people. And Father, we're praying and believing, God, for miracles, God. God, we know you are a miracle worker, God. We sing about it, God, but we know it, God, because you have healed people, you have delivered people, you have set people free, you have saved people, God, out of this world where they were so bound by drugs and alcohol. But God, we're asking you to do it again in situations in life, God. God, we know, God, there's people that need a miracle physically, God. Father, I pray for you to intervene in a powerful way. We pray for those that are sick in our body here, God. I pray for Joe Zoda, God. I lift him up before your throne this morning, God. We pray for a miracle in his life. We curse all cancer. We curse the power of Satan that's coming against your people, God. God, there's greater days ahead, and God, you're going to move mightily, God. We pray for those that are broken hearted, God. Those that are grieved and lost loved ones, God, Evelyn and others, God. We lift them up before your throne that you would comfort them, that you would give them peace, that you would give them the grace.
represented here. We pray for wayward children, God. God, so many parents are praying, believing for years, God. Aunts and uncles, grandparents, God, believing for miracles in their children's life. The devil is raised against our children. And God, we're standing in the gap and believing for a total miracle in their lives that you would save, deliver, and set them free from the drugs and the alcohol, God. There's so many bond, God. There's so many listening to the lies of the enemy, God. Father, we pray for a release of your Holy Spirit, God, over each and every one here, God. Father, and over every situation, God, we're thanking you, God, that you are going to do this work, God, and we're going to hear great testimonies, God. I pray those that are sick, that are not with us today, God. I pray for Pastor Lisa. I pray for Caleb, God, others, God, God, that need a touch from you, a healing touch. God, you're faithful, God, to reach through, God, and to listen in on the media here, live stream, that you can touch the lives that are watching us that need a miracle. God, we're praying for those that are watching that need a touch from you right now. God, minister your grace, your peace, your healing, God, salvation, God. God, and I pray for people here that come to church every Sunday but never have surrendered their lives. Father, I pray, God, that you would move, that they would cry out to you, God. God, we pray for salvation to be released in this place today, God. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you for all you're doing. And we seal it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. Come on, take a moment to greet someone before you're seated. We have a few more people here that were here earlier. So we want to greet everyone, welcome them, let them know you're glad that they're here this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. God bless you. Good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. On our best day, we're blessed. On our worst day, we're blessed. Amen. Amen. Every day, we're blessed. Yes. You've got to believe that as you fight against every difficulty, every challenge in your life, every negative thought in your mind. And it's good to be in the house of the Lord where we can be encouraged this morning. Amen. Yes. Amen. Through the praise and the worship, through the prayer time, through the ministry of the word. And this morning, we have... Holy Communion that we're going to partake of and we're going to remember the greatest sacrifice the world has ever seen yes. and that is the sacrifice of the Son of God on Calvary for your sins and for my sins that we can be changed. How many of you know that that blood never loses its power? Yeah. Reaches to the highest yeah. mountain and flows yeah. to the lowest valley. Yes. The blood of Jesus. Amen. Pastor Lisa is not doing well but we greet her. She's watching online. At least she told me she was. Let's see if she's still on. But I'm sure she is. I gotta be careful she's not here. I might say things I shouldn't, but she'll still be watching. But uh, I want to pray. Thank you for praying for her and uh, believing God for her healing. Yes. Amen. We pray for all of God's people, those that are sick among us. We pray for healing power to flow. Yes. And we believe that during our prayer time, something happened. Amen. 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 Absolutely. If you would just join your, uh, or just focus your attention on the screen, we have uh, some video announcements of things that are coming up this week and this month. Amen. Well, good morning, Victory family. We'd like to take a few moments out of our service just to show you a few upcoming announcements. Our life groups are a vital part of what we do here at Victory Church. If you have not yet connected with a life group, there's still space to do so. We meet every Wednesday here at the church at 7 p.m. We also have youth ministry, kids church, and nursery. Something for the entire family to connect. So we hope to see you this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. The Intentional Women's Ministry has an event here at the church Thursday, November 17th at 6.30 p.m. It's going to be a story night where you're going to hear some really powerful testimonies of some women right here at Victory Church. We encourage you to sign up through our church app if you're gonna be a part of this, just so we can be prepared for your arrival. And we know that you are going to leave this event so encouraged. We really hope to see you there. We are thrilled to announce that Victory is planning a mission trip next year to Guatemala. 
The dates will be July 22nd to the 29th, and we're going to have an informational meeting following service on Sunday, November 13th. This is not a commitment meeting. This is an informational meeting. Whether you're interested or whether you're definitely sure that you want to go, this meeting is for you. We do have to have a certain amount of people to make this trip possible. So if you have any interest, please sign up on our church app so we know how many people will be present at the meeting. We will be having a baby dedication service Sunday, November 20th during our 10 a.m. service. If you have any babies that you would like to dedicate, you've got to do two things. Number one, you've got to fill out an application. Applications are right over here at our Welcome Center. Once you fill that all the way out, turn it in and someone will be in contact with you. Second, you need to be a part of our baby dedication class. In this class, we go over why we dedicate babies as well as give information about that day. So if you want to be a part of this, make sure to do those two things. Someone will be in contact with you and we're very excited. We love dedicating our babies here at Victory Church. If you can believe it or not, Thanksgiving is just a few weeks away. Something we love to do here at Victory Church is our annual Thanks Gathering service. This will be the Wednesday before Thanksgiving right here at the church. It will be the 23rd, and we're inviting everyone to come and be a part of it. What we'll do is we'll meet briefly in the sanctuary to just go over testimonies of what God has done in our lives. We leave so encouraged when people stand up and share what God is doing. And then we'll shift into the cafe and youth room where we're going to have some desserts and fellowship with one another. You can sign up through our church app if you'd like, and we're encouraging everyone to bring their favorite dessert. We had an amazing fall outreach event here at Victory last Saturday. If you weren't able to be a part of that event or see what happened here, here's a few highlights of what went on.
is your first time here at Victory Church, we want to welcome you. You are our guest, and we are so honored that you took the time to be here with us this morning. If you wouldn't mind doing one quick thing, we have connection cards that are right in the seat pockets in front of you. If you could fill that out and drop it off right here at our Welcome Center, we have a really cool gift that we want to give to you. And if you're tuning in for the first time on our live stream, we want to welcome you as well. We have digital connection cards on our website at victorychurchri.com. Once you fill those out, we want to be able to pray with you, answer any questions that you may have about the church, and to connect you with people. One of the easiest ways to stay connected with the events here at Victory Church is by visiting our website at victorychurchri.com. You can download our free sermon podcast, which will keep you updated with all of our sermons in the past in high audio quality. You can also download our free church app. And through our church app, you can give, you can register for events, and you can sign up for groups. We do hope that you plug in, you stay connected, and we will see you this Wednesday at Life Groups. God bless. Amen. Amen. Are you guys ready to give this morning? Yes. Yes. You guys like that highlight reel? Before we go into the scriptures, we're actually going to have Lawrence. Where are you at? He's going to come up and just share a quick announcement. Um, how many of you are grateful for our kids' ministry here? Yeah. Rachel and your team, they do an amazing job. Just give me a second. Yeah. Um, we have a couple of announcements. Um, first of all, I love what Pastor Mike was sharing last week about, you know, being able to um, get involved somehow, you know, in different ministries. And all the things that we do are, are dependent on all of you. And That's all right. of us, right. we all together do something. And even like that event, like there's no way that like just me and Lawrence and a couple other people could have done that. Mm -hmm. It's everyone coming together and each doing their part and everyone doing a little part here, a little part there. So on that note, we are looking for more adult helpers with our children's ministry for just like once a month um, to help out. And Lawrence, I asked him to share because he's a helper and he's also a parent of some kids in there. So I just wanted him to share a little bit about what it means to him to be a helper and also a parent. Thanks, Rachel. All right, so uh, first of all, they told me I have five minutes, all right? So I don't know about quick, you know, but... <laughs> so um, I wanted to just take a quick moment to uh, talk about why I share, well, why I go out and serve up there in the children's ministry. So um, first of all, I serve because I know what the Lord has done in my life. Amen. All right, and Amen. It's, it's, it's no small journey where I've come from. I think David says it best in the Bible when he says that, who am I, Lord? And what is my family that you brought me this far? That's right. That's right. Amen. And so every day, I remember what he's done in the past, and I know what he does for me every single day. In the morning, he assures me that whatever happens, he's got me. You know, he gives me that shield. He gives me that confidence on a daily basis. Someone once asked me, why do I always smile? Because you have no idea what the Lord is doing for you on a regular basis. You know? And so... I, I will tell you, because of what he's doing, I will always praise his holy name for the rest amen. of my life. Amen. But here's the thing. I don't stop just there. Come on. Right? Come on. Amen. And I, I want to show you something real quick in the word of God. You know, because you all know that you know, everything that's written is written for our learning. Yeah. And so you know, I just, I'll shoot you over to um, Genesis 8, 20 real quick. And it says there that then Noah built an altar to the Lord. Taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, never again will I curse the ground because of humans. Mm. So we all know the story of Noah. You know, the Lord put him on a boat, wiped out the entire world with water. And the moment he hit ground, he went ahead and sacrificed an offering to the Lord. Right. Now, Noah could have just said, Lord, thank you. I praise your holy name for all you've done for me and my family. But no, he went out and actually sacrificed an offering to the Lord. Good. And it, it said that it, it, it gladdened the Lord's heart yeah. to the point where the Lord says, never again will I curse the ground because of humans. Yeah. I mean, later on, it says further that, you know, and never again will I destroy all living creature, uh, creatures as I've done. One act by Noah caused God to say, you know what? I'm all set. I'm not going to wipe out the world like that again. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, you know, for me, I know what God has done. I will praise his holy name, Amen. but I take it that much further. We're That's 2022. Right. I can't be, you know, 
sacrifice of burnt offerings in my backyard. <laughs> but what I can do is I can offer my time. That's, right. That's good. That's good. Hallelujah. Because I know that and many more gladdens the Lord's heart. Amen. Amen. You know, and so in terms of why I serve, this is one main reason why. Now, you know, Rachel also told me to just kind of speak quickly about, you know, my experience in, you know, pretty much uh, helping out there. So when I got there the first time, I had no idea what to expect. It looked like kind of a zoo, you know, kids bouncing here and there, you know, all over the place, you know. And, and so then I started serving, and I started to notice something incredible that none of you will ever see unless you were in there. Amen. One of the wildest kids in there, always bouncing around, left them right, you know, just dropping the class, you know, was having a bad day one day. So I pulled him aside and just put him to the back and sat with him. And, you know, just sitting with him, I just had to just have small talk with him and ask him about scripture. Now, he's a nine-year-old boy. When I was nine years old, forget about asking me about scripture, all right? My <laughs> mind is not there. I don't even know what scripture is. I asked him, you know, uh, do you know any scripture? He said, of course I do. And so I asked him, oh, all right, you know, uh, what, what's your favorite? So he started thinking, and he said, oh, well, there's a lot. But, I, you know, I'd say it's John 3.16. So now I'm, I'm surprised. This, this nine-year-old boy, just, I'm looking at him. And he's saying this. So now I take it one step further. I asked him, all right, you know, you can't ever know what that actually says. You know, so I asked him, you know, well, why don't you tell me what, what does it say? He said, every single line. Amen. Amen. And I'm sitting there looking at this kid. And I, I just said, and this is the wildest child? What about the ten ones? <laughs> there, there is something going on in there. The Holy Spirit is moving in that, that room. Amen. Yeah. And I will tell you that these kids, they need our encouragement. They yes, need our presence. Yes. Now, for parents, we give our handouts for you to be able to you know, go home and read to them and kind of encourage them at home. But for the rest of us, we need to sacrifice our time, Amen. offer our time to help these children back there. Amen. So, so we do have a need. Yeah. You know, yeah. And I pray that God just speaks it in your heart to you know, register to help us in there. Yeah. Now, I'll, I'll leave with this, all right? Now, as us believers in Christ, if you've ever given your life to Christ and said, I acknowledge you for what you did for me on that cross, Amen. then let these strong words spoken in Galatians 2.20 hold firm in your heart, which says that I've been crucified Amen. on the cross. Amen. It's no longer I who lives, but yes. Christ who lives in me. Amen. The life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you, have, if you have any interest, please come uh, see me at the church, or you can set the loving of the cards in front of you. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. If that doesn't get you serving. I don't know what will, but we appreciate that. And as Rachel said, fill out those connection cards. There's a spot specifically for children's ministry. What we'll do is get you through a process, background check. Um, and then we'll get you plugged in. Amen? Amen. Amen. You guys ready to give this morning? Yes. Yes. Stand with me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Thank I just want to Lord. share a couple of scriptures. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, it's funny, just about seven years ago, I was sitting in a um, an armed guard booth at Smith & Wesson Company in Springfield, and I was sitting talking with a couple guards, and they were trying to convince me to pitch into a pool that they were doing. Um, and what that pool was is pitching in to get some Powerball tickets for the biggest lottery jackpot. It was, I believe, 1.4 billion or something at that time. And, you know, and I told them, you know, what I do, and I just said, That's, I, I, I can't do that. You know, and then it's, they just started saying, how oh, you're crazy. I said, well, what if we all win? You're going to look like an idiot because we're going to have all this money. And I said, yeah, I might. You know, the funny thing is, is none of them won. <laughs> And life went on. And so it's funny now that as I stand here this morning, we most of the world is focusing on now the biggest lottery right now at 1.6 billion. And people are praying and having dreams of grandeur and trying to seek it out. And, and you know what's funny? I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna play again and the cycle's just gonna keep going. And you know what I what I've learned in life is money does not solve everything. Amen. Money does funny things to people. I was watching a video of a woman, an aunt, and her nephew went in for a lottery ticket, and they decided if we win, we'll split it. And guess what? They won. So they each got checks of $600,000, and on the news live, she said, I'm suing my nephew because we did not agree to 
split the money. And so it became this big example. They were saying that that actually happened. When people get that much money too fast, they get funny. You know, I remember when I was in high school about 20 years ago, my twin brother found a, a wallet on the ground. And uh, he found $72 cash. Now, when you're a teenager, $72, that's a, that's a lot of money. You can do many things with that, right? <laughs> And so he decided to make a nice invest investment at a corner convenience store in our town and bought as much candy as he could with $72. And 20 years ago, you could buy a lot of candy with $72. And so me, as a loving twin brother who found out what he did, said, you need to give me a cut of that candy or I'm going to go right downstairs and tell mom what you did. And so we enjoyed that candy for the next few weeks, but when my mom came up and did a surprise room inspection, she pulled our mattress open and from under the mattress exploded hundreds of candy wrappers all over the table. <laughs> We got what was coming to us. We enjoyed it for those two weeks, but we got what was coming to us. And my point is this, is we get funny when, when we get blessed or when a lot of money comes our way when our heart is not in check. And I want to read a scripture of a man named Abraham who was blessed by the Lord. And in Genesis 12, it says, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and to your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. How many of us want, I want my name to be in that scripture. I want God to bless me and make my name great. And so we desire that, but if our heart is not in check, sometimes the very things that we seek out that I think are going to get us out can be the very same things that destroy us. And even as Lawrence was sharing, he didn't know what I was going to share. But the whole point of what did Abraham do, it says that when he left and he obeyed God, in verse 7, he says, So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And then it says in verse 8, From there he moved to the hill country to the east of Bethel and pitched his tent. And with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east, and there he built an altar to the Lord. And so in this process of the blessing, yes. Abraham was continually building an altar to the Lord. Amen. What that showed me is he wanted the blessing, but he wanted to make sure that his heart was in the right place. Amen. And so we as a church, we don't seek out our own money. We don't play the lottery to try and get. That's not what we're called to do. We have a Heavenly Father who desires to bless us. Amen. And I don't want to receive anything of great value unless the Lord has passed my heart through His hands Amen. and filtered it in a way where I can be ready to receive that Amen. blessing. Amen? Amen. And so while the rest of the world is seeking their own means to get material wealth, and they think that that's what's going to solve everything, we as the church, we look to our Heavenly Father. We look to our Heavenly Father who knows when a sparrow falls out of the tree. That's how much he knows and cares and loves for us. That if he knows that small detail, how much more does he know and is involved in our lives this morning? Amen? And I love later on in the, um, right, if you flip the page in the Bible and go to verse 14, that's when we see that Abraham tied for the first time. In verse 20 it says, and Abraham gave a tenth of everything. And so how do we maintain our heart when God blesses us? We give back to the Lord. Yeah, That's amen. what we do this yeah. morning. We, we give of our tithes and offerings, missions, the youth expansion, whatever the Lord puts on our heart, we give. Because 100% of what we have, the Lord gave us. And when he only requires a small portion back, not because he needs it, but because he knows it is in the giving. It's a reminder that he will provide for all of our needs this morning. Amen? amen. So if you have your phone or however you give, if you have the envelopes, Let's just take it and lift it up to the Lord and say, God, we're not going to look to the world for material wealth. We're not going to look to the world for gain. We're going to give this morning believing that there's going to be an abundance Jesus. that you have for us this morning. Yes. So, Heavenly Father, we pray this morning as all hands are lifted across this sanctuary, those who are tuning in on our live stream. Father, we just ask right now, Lord, that we would see increase in our lives, not just financially, but God, that we would have that heart that Abraham had. When you promised blessing, when you promised abundance, God, he built an altar. And God, we built an altar right now spiritually in our hearts. We sacrifice all that we have, all our dreams, all our visions, and we give back to you a portion of all that you've given to us. And God, we pray that we would see uh, an increase in our church, in the ministries that are involved. Thank God, we Lord. pray for our missionaries, yes, God. Lord. We pray for the, the local ministries of going around our city and giving to the, the lost, the broken. Father, we pray that you would bring people to you as we give to you. Let this be multiplied, God, yes. to further your kingdom where we are. 
And God, I pray that if there's anyone here who's living in anxiety because of the finances, because of uh, the inflation that's around the world, and they may be looking to man's system to better their wealth, God, I pray that as they give this morning, you would do something in their heart, God. Yes. Lord, you would bring financial provision. We would hear testimonies, God, yes, of bills being paid, God, yes. of car issues being fixed, God, because money is coming in because your people are being faithful this morning. And God, we thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. amen and amen. You're on liberty to give this morning. We'll have the four ways to give behind me on the screen as well. God bless. into a special time of remembering what Jesus did. I hope to bring a fresh perspective and understanding to a very, very familiar passage of Scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. Are you ready? Amen. Let me ask the rest of you. Are you ready? Yes. Verse 23, for I received, this is Paul the Apostle, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Now there are some, uh, there are many, many Old Testament scriptures. We, we believe in 66 books of the Bible. Uh, what we call the New Testament or the Old Testament in the New Testament, uh, the Old Covenant in the New Co Covenant. Every scripture is given by inspiration of God and there's something for us to learn in every passage of scripture. Amen. And this morning, before we partake of communion, I want to tie together some Old Testament and New Testament scriptures as we uh, seek greater understanding into the Word of God and into what we believe and what we do this morning. I want to share something with you uh, that I had never experienced before in my trip to Israel. This past um, October, my wife and I and another couple went to Israel, and it was my sixth time, it was my wife's third time. And in my previous five times, I never ever experienced what I experienced in Israel. Now, when I told some friends, uh, actually uh, friends of ours who have a tour company that has taken uh, hundreds of trips to Israel, uh, the dates that we were going, they said, uh, I don't know if you want to go during that time. And I said, why? Because it is the time in Israel that is Yom Kippur and the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, so because I have been five times before, I said, well, it's not a big deal. Uh, we're going to go, we're going to be there for over two weeks, so we'll get through it. But what I didn't realize 
that in Israel on Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur is what uh, is the Hebrew for the Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at some scriptures that tell us about that in the book of Leviticus and the Feast of Tabernacles, which is another feast that is from uh, the Old Testament scriptures. But what I didn't realize that in Israel on Yom Kippur, everything shuts down. Now, when I mean everything, I mean everything. From sunset on, on the day before to sunset on the day after, from evening to the next evening, everything was shut down. Now, I thought, when they told me, you know, it's going to be shut down, I thought, there's got to be a restaurant open. <laughs> there's got to be a McDonald's. There's got to be a Starbucks. There's got to be something open somewhere, somewhere. And what I didn't realize was not only was everything closed, they didn't even drive cars. I could not believe it. We actually went before, before the, the, the day of uh, uh, atonement began, Yom Kippur began, and we went to a hotel and we said, oh great, now we can go eat in the restaurant, the hotel. And then we found out that they, they, they said, you can't even eat here because you need to get off the road. There are no cars that are on the road in Israel during Yom Kippur. So there goes our thoughts of having a nice meal. Good thing we brought snacks, so we went back and we had a power bar. <laughs> but what was so fascinating, what was such a, an, an incredible experience was that everything was closed down, no cars were on the road. We went up on the, on the top of the roof of one of the buildings and uh, had a beautiful panoramic view of the Sea of Galilee and the, the main street. And when I tell you there wasn't a car on the road, maybe every two or three hours, and we saw some flashing lights, and I think there were the police that were not arresting them, but then telling them, you need to get home. Now that was so, so incredible to be there in Israel during the most significant holidays, or really, holy day, holy day of the year. Yom Kippur, if you, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Leviticus. I know some of you enjoy doing your devotions in the book of Leviticus, and reading about all the sacrifices, but again, I want to try to just uh, tie in a few thoughts and share something, hopefully, to be a blessing to you. Turn to the person next to you say, Pastor wants to be a blessing to you. Now, the, uh, Yom Kippur means the Day of Atonement. Now, this was the most significant holiday, the most significant day in the Hebrew calendar, in God's plan, in the Old Covenant, because it was the time when the high priest of God would go into the holiest place in the tabernacle, the Holy of Holies, and he would go in one time a year, and he would go in to offer a sacrifice for the sins of the people to cover their sins for the whole year. Yom Kippur is a national day, it was a national day and still is a day of repentance for the people of God. Now again, when you, when you think in the Old Testament, understand God gave his scriptures, amen? God gave this word. And what we as New Testament believers, as believers in Jesus Christ, all of those Old Testament prophecies pointed to the cross. They pointed to Jesus and today they are fulfilled in Christ. We do not uh, um, celebrate the same way that they did in the Old Testament, but I want you to understand something. There are some lessons, there are some principles, there are some truths that we need to learn and apply them to our life today. Amen. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 26. And the Lord said to Moses, the tenth day of the seventh month, this is uh, Leviticus 23, verse 26, now seven, uh, Tenth day of the seventh month shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation for you. You shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. You shall do no work on the same day, for it is the day of atonement, to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. For any person who is not afflicted uh, of, the soul, of soul that same day, he shall be cut off from his people. And any person who does work on that day shall be destroyed among his people. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. 
It shall be to you a Sabbath of solemn rest, and you shall afflict your souls on the ninth day of the month at evening. From even, evening to evening, you shall celebrate your Sabbath. Now, for us as believers, according to the word of God, again, these scriptures are, are significant because, again, they point to the ministry and the work of Jesus Christ. The book of Hebrews in the New Testament, we, we learn that these are types and shadows, again, that are fulfilled in Jesus. That we no longer have to have a high priest uh, a human being, a, a certain type of minister that goes into a, a, a tabernacle or a holy place and offers blood anymore because the Bible says in Hebrews that Jesus Christ once and for all offered himself without spot to God yeah. as our sacrifice our, for our day of atonement yeah. so that you and I are in perfect relationship with God because of what Jesus did. Can amen. you say amen? Amen. amen. You see, for the high priest to go into the holy place, again, once a year, he did it with a sacrifice. And for him to go in, there was a veil that separated the holy place from the most holy place. The most holy place was the place where God's presence would dwell. Where God, again, in the Old Testament economy, would manifest his glory. Now, that, there, that veil was there, and then later when the temple was built, there was another veil, another uh, high and expansive curtain that separated the holy place from the most holy place. But do you know that when Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says that that veil was rent. That veil was split. It wasn't split from the bottom up because that would have signified man could have done it. But it was split from the top to the bottom, signifying that now for you and I, we have the privilege, the awesome privilege to go into the very presence of God ourselves without a bull or a goat or the blood thereof, but with the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Now I'm going somewhere with this. So Yom Kippur, as I said, was a special time and we were there during this time and we had to uh, suffer uh, and, and have our own kind of fast for 24 hours. All restaurants, all entertainment, no cars on the road. Okay, so we get through that and then five days later, the Feast of Tabernacle begins. And now that means there's more holy days and that means that there's more days when things are not open. Now I wanna to talk to you a minute again, I'm going some with this please stay engaged stay focused because it's significant now if you look and you turn to um, in the same chapter of Leviticus uh, verse 33 it says the Lord spoke to Moses saying speak to the children of Israel saying the 15th day of the seventh month should be the feast of tabernacles for seven days On the first day, there shall be a holy convocation, and you shall do no customary work. And that means no restaurants are open. For seven days, you shall make, uh, offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. Now, the Feast of Tabernacles, again, this is Old Testament. We don't live according to the literal um, um, interpretation of that for us to apply to our life today. But the seven um, the seven days, the Feast of Tabernacles, or Sukkoth, uh, in the Hebrew means temporary dwelling. Now, what the Feast of Tabernacles was for the people of God, now these are for the, 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 the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as, as they came into the Promised Land. Uh, how many of you know before they came into the Promised Land, they went through a wilderness for 40 years? How many of you know God had a plan to bring them in to the promised land, but they went through a wilderness and they had a very harsh environment and a very difficult passage through the wilderness. And so God wanted them to remember for the Feast of Tabernacles, this was to build a tabernacle. After they came into the land, they were, although they lived in big houses, expansive houses, although they were blessed, now they were to establish for seven days a booth or a tabernacle or a little hut that they would live in. I want, you, I want to show you something. If you could put up some of those pictures that I, I took from Israel. What was amazing, when we were in Israel, they had, they built and constructed these booths for the Feast of Tabernacle. That's a picture from my 
uh, hotel window. That's a close-up of it. And if you can just show us another one, this is at a hotel across the street. If you can see, um, again, this is the close-up of it. They literally built these booths in um, obedience to what the scriptures say. In the restaurants, when we were able to eat, when they weren't closed, uh, for dining area, they would literally, for their patios and outside dining, they would build these booths and, and the Jewish people would go in and they would, they would dine and eat under those, in those booths for seven days. Mm. Well, they won't eat for seven days there. <laughs> but you know, during a seven year period. Mm. That was supposed to be a joke, I could tell you. <laughs> <very good. laughs> Tough crowd this morning. <laughs> but what was just so incredible is that this was going on and they were obeying that passage of scripture. They were, in their sense, doing what the scripture says by, by building these tents. So now what, what was the purpose? Why did God, uh, God have the people to uh, build these tabernacles and build these tents and temporary dwellings? Because God wanted to remind the people what he, how he had provided for them. For 40 years, God gave them manna in the wilderness. God gave them quail. God protected them. The Bible says there was a cloud of fire, a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day that protected them. And God, as he brought them out of Egypt and brought them into the promised land, God was providing for them. So these dwellings were to be an object lesson. And you know what the main purpose, and you know what I'm trying to say, leading to communion, the whole point was the point of remembrance. The whole point, the whole reason why God had the people. Now, every year for seven days, they would have come out of their houses, they would have built these temporary dwellings, and they would have lived in them for seven days to make a vivid impression upon their mind, their heart, and their spirit that they ought to remember what God did those 40 years bringing them through the wilderness. It is so amazing when we partake of communion. This is a memorial. This is another remembrance. And, and, and I say, God, why do we need these remembrance? And you know, it's simple. We tend to forget all that God has done. Yeah. We, by nature, are always on to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. We lose sight of what God has done. And sometimes we focus on things we shouldn't focus on. For the people of God, they would have had this reminder. They would have used this as an opportunity to remember where they came from. And I think sometimes we all lose sight and we forget where we came from spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. We lose sight of the fact that we were lost in our sin, that we were bound by our flesh, that we were living, and the Bible says we were children of wrath as all others were, but we forget sometimes the grace of God in our lives that we're here today. We lose sight of what God has done. And so the people, they were to go in these tabernacles and they were to remember, but they would also have a time of thanksgiving, a time of joy. You say, how is that a time of joy? when you think about where you came from. When I think about my life, how as a teenager I was mixed up, I was messed up, I was heading towards destruction, but for the grace of God. Let me tell you, that's enough to give God praise for a thousand years. That's enough. We lose sight of it. And God was impressing upon their minds. Listen, every year, you know, for the children of God in, in the Old Testament, there were three uh, celebrations, three festivals or feasts, if you will, that the, every male was required over 20 years old to go wherever they lived in, the, in Israel. They were required to go up to Jerusalem to the house of God. Three times a year. Why? Again, to remember, to remember, to remember yes. where they came from. How God had provided. And, and the Feast of, of Tabernacles was one also that was associated with the harvest. How God had provided for them in the land. How he provided a harvest. Now the Bible says they were to rejoice. Now for you and I today, I know we find it hard sometimes to have joy. Because we think everything has to be perfect to have joy. 
Well, if you're waiting for everything to be perfect, you will be waiting for a long, long, long time. It does not have to be perfect to rejoice in God. You see, we as Christians are still bound by a worldly mentality. We're still bound by, well, if I have something good going on in my life, I can rejoice. If I succeed, I can rejoice. If I have the, the newest iPhone, I can rejoice. Isn't it funny? I'm telling you. I go into an iPhone store and I get a new iPhone and I look at them and I say, this phone is so cool. This is so awesome. I want one. I get it a few days later. Yep. It's yeah. no big deal. <laughs> yep. We get a brand new car. And you know, we, there's something about that new car smell. Isn't it? You, it's so powerful. You know, they actually have, you can buy air fresheners that have a new car smell. Why? Because you want a reminder that the car that you have that is 7 years old, 12 years old, you want to think about what it smelled like when you first, first bought it. They have sprays you can spray in your car. It's a new car smell. Why? Because the, 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 the scent of smell is one of the most powerful scents that remind you and bring you back in time. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so God provided for us. Jesus Christ himself said, as often as you eat this bread and drink yeah. this cup, you remember what I did for you. Yeah. We need reminders. Yeah. Yeah. We live in a day and an age and a culture where we rejoice over the wrong things. We need to rejoice over the fact that God has provided yes. salvation for yes. us. Our sins yes. are forgiven and our eternal destiny yes. is settled in heaven forever. Amen. The, world, the world at its best gives temporary joy. But God gives a joy that fulfills it leads to satisfaction and contentment. Yeah. I said God gives a joy that truly satisfies and fulfills us. Amen. Paul the Apostle, a man who undoubtedly was one of the, the greatest Christians, possibly missionaries, church planters that the world has ever seen. In, 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 in our um, culture, we would have him, uh, he would have millions of followers on Twitter. He would be on the cover of the Rolling Stones, or well, maybe. <laughs> but we would, we would promote him and, and, and we would make a superstar out of him. But you know what the Bible says? He was whipped, he was beaten, he was, he was shipwrecked, fasting off and in prison over and over again. He wasn't the movie star or he wasn't the pop star of our culture that even in Christianity we make them out to be. He, was, he went through so much suffering, so much pain for Christ. But you know what? The Bible says he had a joy. And the Bible says he wrote, a, he wrote an epistle called the Philippians and, and, and it's known as the epistle of joy because there are over a dozen references in a small book, maybe 16 or 18 references to joy in one form or fashion or another. And that, that epistle was written and Paul would say in, in verse 4 of chapter 4, rejoice in the Lord and again I say rejoice. But Paul, you don't know what I'm going through. But Paul, you don't know what I'm dealing with. But Paul, you don't know how hard life is. Paul says, yeah, you want to see the stripes on my back? You want to compare your pain with mine? Here he is writing Philippians in a, from a prison. The world would say you can't have joy. You're a failure. You're, you're cut off. You're not, you're not a mover and a shaker. You're not an influencer anymore. Paul, it's all over for you. You know what Paul said? I rejoice in Christ Jesus. And I have no confidence in the flesh. You see, Paul would write that epistle and he would have a, an authority that, that no one else could have because he went through the depths of pain and the depths of suffering, but God gave him a supernatural joy. How many of you know we need a supernatural joy? There are some things in life that don't necessarily change in our time frame or things don't necessarily go the way we want them to go. 
If we're going to be just like the world, then it will be sorrowful. But if we're like what God wants us to be, we'll begin to rejoice. We'll begin to thank God. We'll begin to praise God. It's a joy that is based upon who God is and what he has done for us. Psalm 100 says, serve the Lord with gladness. We're called to live out a life of thanksgiving. Live in praise and thanksgiving. And you know what? I need this reminder. I'm just like you. I need to be reminded of that. We all need to be reminded of living our lives, you know, because we still get bound by, 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 by what we think is going to make me ha happy. What's going to make us happy? My wife and I, when we went to, to Israel, we're going to be there for over two weeks. I'm saying, this is a nice time. Oh, a vacation. See, for me, I love Israel. I love the people of Israel. I love the plan God has for Israel in the end times. And, and I believe that we ought to love Israel. Yes. Amen. Yes. The Bible says pray for the peace yes. of Jerusalem. Yes. Let all those who love thee prosper. Yes. I mean, God has a plan and a purpose for them. You say, well, what's the plan? Where are they at now? They're in disobedience. Their hearts are hardened. And what they do in their land right now might be out of tradition, out of ritual. But God put it in his word. And prophetically, one day it will be fulfilled yes. in the kingdom of God yes. or in the millennial, I should say. Amen. Yes. But, but we were going there, and, and when you, you go into Israel, uh, the airport in Tel Aviv is, is a convergence of, of people coming in and out. And I walked in and I told my wife, see those people that get back to go back to the U.S. or wherever? I says, we're going to be there in a very short time. We're all happy now. They're walking back with sad with their heads down. <laughs> we're like walking there. I said, time goes by so fast. If we base our joy on a time away or base our joy on a new car, it fades. Yeah. It fades. Yeah. Uh, some of you excited uh, Houston Astros fans here. Uh, we accept the Astro fans. No Yankee fans. But... <laughs> But, but it's over. And you know, even, even our coach, they're already talking about who's the contender for next year. It, it, you can't even enjoy things anymore. Time goes by so fast. Things go change. You know, but we're called to serve God with a grateful heart. Amen? Amen. No, that's what the Word of God says. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. Yes. Look, at, I want you to turn to Deuteronomy 28. Come on, I'm almost done. I'm not done, but I'm almost done. You say, what does that mean? Absolutely nothing. Deuteronomy 28. I want to show you something that's just, just mind-blowing. I don't remember seeing this, but, but that's so wonderful about the Word of God. God keeps bringing things out of it. Look at Deuteronomy 28, verse 47. I don't know if you can pull that verse up for us, but here it is. Because you did not serve the Lord your God... With joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of everything. What's the next verse? Therefore, Therefore you'll serve your enemies. Deuteronomy 28 is the chapter of curses and blessings. God lists the things that we would be blessed for and the, thing, the reasons why we'd be cursed. And this is one of them. Because you didn't imagine. God says, because you didn't serve me with gladness. We're not talking about serving man. We're not talking about serving a church or serving Pastor Richard. We're talking about serving the Lord. And, the, and God is saying, you're cursed if you don't serve me with joy and gladness. Yeah. I'm sorry, this is the word of God this morning. Come on, we're not contending with intellect versus intellect, style versus style, perspective versus perspective. No, I'm giving you the word yes. of God. The Amen. word of God yes. says you need to have joy in serving God. God is not looking for sour saints. He's not looking for people who are always complaining, forgetting, or overlooking what God has said. Listen, you and I, we are to serve with joy. Yes. We're called to thanksgiving. Amen. 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 You see... Why? Because God is saying, listen, I brought you out of the land of Egypt. I brought you into the promised land. Yes. You need to rejoice and remember what I've done and give me thanks. Why? Because our memory is short. What happens? We begin, if we're not grateful, we begin to think it's our own strength. Mm -hmm. God have mercy. We begin to get our lives in order. We begin to, to have get a degree and, and get a good job and a nice home and a car and a family. Then all of a sudden we think, wow, it was my intellect. It was my ability. It was my strength. God says, no, it's not. It's my grace. It's my favor. It's my goodness. Yes. Yes. 
Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 10, said, I am what I am by the grace of God. You need to be able to say that and give God glory. I am what I am by God's grace. Hallelujah. Do you know that even the communion in some persuasions, it's called the Eucharist. And you know what the word Eucharist means? Simply thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. You know, we take so much for granted in life. Parents take their children for granted. Children take their parents for granted. We're living in a culture of disrespect. Yes. A culture in our schools, in our communities, in our culture, in our churches, uh, an attitude because we're too close to the world. We're too much like the world. We complain about things. We disrespect leaders. We disrespect people. And we think it's okay because everybody else is doing it. It's not okay. Because God in his word has laid certain things down. And he's not going to judge you by what culture's doing. He's going to judge you by what the word of God says. In the last days, children will be disobedient to their parents. They'll be unloving. They'll be untruthful. They'll be disrespectful, unthankful. That's the culture. But we're called to be different. That's why God gives us rem memorials. Remember. Remember to live a life of faith. Thanking God. Why? Because he brought you out of Egypt. He provided for you in the wilderness. He protected you from enemies. He's still a provider. He's still a protector. God told him, I want you to go out and I want you to live in these temporary dwellings to remember where you came from. Amen. You know, I think it was our 20th anniversary of our church. What we did was, uh, we did like a, a little trip down memory lane. We went back to our storefront, small storefront on Branch Avenue. Then we went to our second building on Admiral Street, and then we finished here. But that small storefront, when we tried to squeeze in, it wasn't... Not the whole church that came that day, but the few that came. It was so small. We could not believe this is where we started. Do you know that Pastor Mike and Pastor Tara now live in that's their apartment? It houses them and their two children. Back then it housed the whole church. It was a good memorial to go back here and see where we came from. Look where we are today. This is what God has done. God has provided. God has blessed. God has made a way. It wasn't me. It wasn't you. It was God working and fulfilling his promise. But it's good to go back and remember, you know what? The temporary dwellings, those, those tabernacles that they had to make to remember where they came from. But I want to just... just and bringing this to a close, I want to make a little shift in temporary dwellings. You know, the Bible says they would have dwelt, they dwelt in temporary, they dwelt in these tents that were temporary. How many of you know this morning we're dwelling in a temporary tent? The Bible says, Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says you have this earthly tent. This well, this body, it's temporary. You know, when, when we do a international service out on the side here, we have to call and find out prices for tents. Smaller tents, the cheaper, the bigger ones. Are, you know, we all have different size tents. But it's a temporary tent. It's a temporary dwelling. One day we're going to lay this for... i got to read the scriptures. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Don't you just love the word of God? Don't you just love the truth of God's word? Yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Look what Paul says. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed. We have a building from God. A house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. Hallelujah. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality might be swallowed up by life. Think about it. Every single one of us are growing older. You know, and, and, and age is just a number 
We know that, right? You know, you could be you could be 60, and if you're going to live till 90, you're relatively young. Or you could be 20, and if you're going to die at 25, you're old. Oh, I know. You know what? We never, we always think it's the other person that's going to die. <laughs> Isn't it true? We never think it. But you know what Paul said? After all they did to Paul the Apostle, they try to shut him up. They try to shipwreck him. They try to stone him. They try to beat him. They try to kill him. You know what he said? For me to live is Christ. To die is gain. What do you do with a person like that? You know, you can't do anything because if you keep him alive, he's going to preach the gospel. If you kill him, he's going to glory to get a great reward. Amen. You can't lose. You see, we're dwelling today in a, in a temporary dwelling. We need to realize that God in his grace has his hand upon our life. This morning, we need to live our lives remembering what he's done in the past. Yeah. When we remember what God has done, it gives us the grace to embrace another day, to live another day. When, when we live our lives grateful, you know what? We realize from Deuteronomy 16 that there are blessings. We rejoice in what God has done. A reminder that, you know what? We're called to give to God. Yeah. We're, to, we're to be grateful with joy this morning. Yeah. God loves a cheerful giver. We need to be grateful today because even as it was said earlier, God is the owner of it all. He's the Savior. He's the Master. He's the Lord. We're called to live a generous life with open hands, open hearts to God and to other people. Even when it comes to serving, we need to do it with joy. We need to be able to say, listen, wow, I get to do this. Even the nursery. I get to do the nursery. I get to do the media. I get to do sound. I get to do the parking lot. I get to pick up someone for church. I get to do it. Not I have to do it, but I get to do it. I don't know if you're listening to me this morning, but I'm preaching to you the word of God. God wants us to serve him with joy. Amen. Not I have to, but I get to. God will bless you and reward you. You know, I remember years ago before this church started, I was at North Providence Assembly of God and I was serving in ministry there. And there was this one guy who, who, who needed a ride for church and he didn't have a car. He had a bicycle and, 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 and he didn't get around that much but by his bike. But in the winter, it got very difficult for him to get to church. But you know what? I committed to pick him up. You know, and that's pretty cool. You feel pretty good about yourself when you serve somebody, don't you? You pat yourself yeah. on the back, and it's good for a couple of weeks or a month, but then it's like, man, this is becoming a drag. I know you don't know what I'm talking about this morning. Come on, you get all excited to do the nursery for a month. Then, oh, God's calling me to do something else. That's, you know what that means? That's just spiritual talk for, I don't want to do this anymore. Or, or we start off in something for a few weeks and then we lose the excitement and the good feeling of starting something new. But you know what? I did this month after month after month. God gave me the grace. But you know what? I had to look at it like this. You know what Jesus said? When you've done it unto the least of this, you're doing it unto yeah. me. If we could only see Jesus in people, if we could only see Jesus in what we're doing, then we'll do it with a different attitude. Yeah. But I did this for I don't know how many months, maybe a year, and, and then we started the church at Victory and, and, and we tried to get him to come and he wasn't coming. But you know what he did? He sent us his tithe check. He wasn't going to church anywhere. He can said it me his pastor in this victory is church but he never came for months and for several years he sent his tithe now when you're starting out a church and you don't have much that tithe check comes in and you're shouting hallelujah because that's a big blessing we didn't have you know uh we, we couldn't go buy coffees back then you know going to dunkin donuts was a big deal back then we had to make our coffee my wife and i you know, I mean, we didn't have much money to go buy coffees. I don't know if you're getting this, but, but come on. Come on, let the Holy Spirit give you revelation. What a blessing it was. What God did because we were faithful and we served and we served with joy. And I'm telling you, when you serve God with joy, you'll see the blessings that God will bring. Amen. As, we, as we just tie this together, you see, we live our life this morning remembering what Christ did for us on the cross. But you know what's awesome?
Christ is still working for us. Yeah. You know what the Bible says? He ever lives to make intercession. Now, I don't know. I've read that passage and I've studied that passage in different commentaries. And some believe he's actually praying for us. And that could be the interpretation. But you know, you know what I really believe the intercession is? He ever lives to make intercession. His sacrifice on the cross yeah. is always before the Father. The Holy Spirit is always bearing witness that Jesus shed his blood. So when I fail, when you fall short, when we make mistakes, the Holy Spirit is using the blood of Jesus. And Jesus' life is testifying to the Father, saying, I paid for their debt. I paid for their sin. I paid for their deliverance. I made a way for them to be set free. I've done for them what no one else could do. And what I've done still stands. And it's still in effect. And Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us. Would you stand together with me this morning? Hallelujah. We remember what God has done. We're grateful this morning. How many of you are grateful? Come on, some of you quiet saints. I know you don't talk much in church, but if I came to your house watching a football game, I know you have a voice. Come on, some of you quiet ones. I can come after you. I don't have a, a wire. You know, these are cordless. Come on, grateful. How many of you are grateful today? Oh, come on. Come on, are you thankful? Are you thankful for what God has done? Come on, are you rejoicing in the right things? Come on, we rejoice in the wrong things in our culture. You know, I feel bad. Listen, I mean this honestly and sincerely. When I see people in, in the public eye, whether they're movie stars, sports figures, I feel bad. I don't care how beautiful they are, how handsome, how pretty, how rich, how famous, if they don't have Jesus. That's all they cut. <laughs> and the world's applause... The world's affection is so short-lived. You're a hero one day, you're a zero the next. You're beautiful, you know, for a few years. You know, models, they're, they're, after 25, they're considered old. Imagine. Come on, professional football players, baseball players, they come and they go. But you and I, today, we have Jesus and we have eternity to look forward to. And you know what Jesus said? He says, I will no longer eat of the fruit of the vine, drink this cup until I drink it in my Father's kingdom. I don't know about you, how bad things are in your life, what you're going through. I don't, I don't want to be insensitive, but let me tell you, heaven will right every wrong. Amen. Heaven will wipe away every sorrow and every tear. Heaven will be worth it. Don't go to hell over anything in this world. Don't lose your soul. What shall the profit of man if he gains the whole world and he loses his soul? Jesus says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat and drink again in my Father's kingdom and you're going to be with me. This morning, let's remember Jesus. Let's remember all that he's done for us. We don't go out and live in temporary dwellings. Maybe we should to remember the beautiful house we're in, the beautiful apartment we have, the car, the money, all that we do have, we lose sight of. Today we want to be grateful. We want to be grateful for the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus. Nothing else to boast in. Paul said it. He said, I boast in Jesus Christ. I boast in what he has done. No longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. Let's remember Jesus today. Let's be grateful today. Come on, let's come against the spirit of ingratitude in our culture. Come on, let's come against that spirit that forgets so quickly. We have an attitude like, like some people that just says, what have you done for me today? We forget what God has done for us over the years. Let's remember this broken body that was broken for you and I. Let's partake in Jesus' name. Amen. same man and Jesus took the cup he said this cup is the covenant that I make through my blood what a covenant nothing could break it nothing could disannul it nothing could supersede it 
This cup represents the shed blood of the holy, pure, sinless Son of God. He hung, he bled, he died on Calvary to provide forgiveness that the vilest sinner, that the most wicked and ungodly person, if they turn to Christ in repentance and faith, they will be made holy, they will make, be made clean. Conversely, the nicest person, the sweetest person in this world that rejects this cup brings damnation upon themselves. Because there's no other day of atonement, there's no other Yom Kippur than the one that Jesus provided through his blood. Yes. Let's thank God that our sins are covered. Our sins are covered. Come on. Come on. He who is forgiven much loves much. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for your blood. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Can we just worship God with all our heart with one more song? Come on, let's let's put it all together, this message. Remember, rejoice, and be thankful. Come on, let's sing with all our heart in Jesus' name, and then we'll pray and close. have joy yes. down deep in our heart you, when we remember 
all that you have done for us, God. Yes. I pray that the joy of the Lord would be our strength. Yes. God, I pray that you would fill your people with joy, their tongue with singing, their mouth with laughter, as they remember all that you have accomplished in their life and all that you have promised us. God, we live according to the promises of God today, thinking of the future that we have, eternal life. Lord, we rejoice in things we shouldn't, even like the disciples who were rejoicing over, over the demons being subject to them. In Jesus, you said, rejoice not in that, but rather that your names are written in the book of life. God, may we rejoice over those truths, over that truth, that we have an eternal home in heaven that will never fade away, where we will receive a glorified body where we will enjoy the glories of heaven, where we will worship you forever, where we will see you as you are, God. We thank you for that hope that does not fade away. We thank you for the blessed hope that we have in God. And we thank you and praise you today. In Jesus' name, and everyone said amen. And we give praise to God. And you serve the Lord with gladness.